So welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites with Tansy and Michelle. And so this week, there were a couple different ones we were looking at. Um, <clears throat> the one we're going to start with is the, um, well, the one we're going to do this week is the power of tenacity. Yes. And when I think about that, I literally think of you, Tansy, but, but let's kick it off with a quote and we'll see if anybody else thinks that it sounds like Tansy. <laughs> this is a quote from Thomas Edison, who is the man that never gave up. Uh, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. And so when, literally when I was looking through quotes, Tansy, around this topic and ran across that one, the, the literally the thing that came to mind for me was you. <laughs> um, and I think about the role that you had where, I mean, I remember the phone calls that I fielded that you and I talked at some points daily as, um, as you went through to turn it around but I but the organization you stepped into the organization that it is today it wouldn't even be close to what it was had you given up and so that's what I think about is then that tipping point that you go through when it's the worst that that you go I can't it's not gonna it's not gonna fix it it's not gonna work and that's where the quote comes to me it's like you literally were right there Malcolm Gladwell, I think, wrote the tipping point that that's where you were at. And so that's where I think the power and tenacity is, is not giving up and going through that point, that tipping point to where you get out on the other side and go, hey, that was worth doing. Yes, yes, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what organization and time, time in my career that you're referencing. Uh, it was a tough situation. I, there were times, I mean, I'm human. There were times I, I just thought, okay, this is it. It's it's never going to work. And uh, that was definitely short-lived because it changed right into what well, I'm going to dig in my heels mm -hmm. and we're going to get this done. And so what does a little bit better look like? What, <laughs> does, what does pushing a little bit harder look like? And will that be enough to cause the whole situation to tilt a different way. And so I think it was moments like those um, that really had the, the most impact. Mm -hmm. Right when I was at the point where I'm like, oh gosh, I'm done. <laughs> That's the moment. That is the moment when you recognize yourself in that spot, reset and push because you're right at the edge of success. But Keep what do you do? And I remember you and I having conversations just around, well, and I think a lot of it is having conversations around different situations and engagements. And I think part of it is whether it's a coach or a friend or somebody else that you can at least talk through things. Yes. You know, when, when you're in the middle of that stuff, because I think you you end up you can end up potentially in a situation that you just see a perspective yes and not necessarily an outpost perspective because even though it's like i wasn't living it day to day with you in it yes. i was living it day to day outside and so whether it's me or somebody else there's a different perspective to go you know what you're actually making headway where you may not feel like it when you're in it yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of truth to what you just said. I mean, I, I remember feeling like, I mean, I, I knew that we were in a different spot than we were yesterday, but it just felt like there was no headway at all, uh, you know, because it was like a fight every step of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really does help when you have someone that you could just talk to, mm -hmm. that you could just be open and download all of the stuff that you're you're going through or all of the things that you may be experiencing uh, because it's that different perspective sometimes that helps pull you out of the pit. I like to call it the pit. <laughs> you know how we sometimes we get down in a pit and we just kind of <laughs> sit there and we're just kind of upset about things, you know, things aren't going the way that we planned. But sometimes when you talk to somebody, just talking it through, just realizing that you're not crazy. Yeah. Sometimes is more than half the battle. 
And it gives you just enough strength to get up, get on a ladder, crawl out of the pit, <laughs> get back to work. I got a great visual with that, Tamsi. I really did. I um I I have to wonder when when I think about the power and tenacity, right, that keeps pushing through. It's not the unrealistic stuff, but it's the stuff that when I think back as leaders or anything else, what you're doing in the job that's in front of you is grounded in who you are and what you know to be true, right? Yeah. And so it's about, for you, quality patient care, right? It's about doing the right thing by your teams and the organization you work for and, and the community that you're supporting. And so I think part of that power and tenacity is you're, you've grounded yourself in that stuff that is so you, you know, that you keep moving forward and you know that, that what you're doing is worth it and the, and the perspective that you are making headway um, is the motivating thing. I mean, I was talking to leaders the other day and, and one of the reminders is where, and it was around the comparison game, right? That that you don't compare yourself, apples and oranges, right? Don't compare yourself to other people because it's that's a game that no one wins. But it was around the comparison game. If you're going to do it, compare yourself to yourself, right? And so the situation you were in, where you may be, where you were six months from now, now you know, ago, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, whatever it is. And I think the power and tenacity too, and I and I think about what what we need to move us forward in that to keep going against the odds and the challenges that you're up against, because it was like new walls surfaced every day. Every day. Is that to remember to look back, if someone's not there to remind you and go, okay, it's different than what it was yesterday. It's not the same. So you may be surfacing more stuff, but it's different. And it's like spring cleaning. I'm going to compare it to that, right? So if you stop, think about when you spread, you pull everything out. You're, so if you stopped at that point, it would be worse than when you started. Yes. So, so don't stop. Don't stop. In the middle of your spring cleaning, whatever that may be. Um, because I think that's when we, we just have to look behind and go, okay, we're better than what we were. Do I have a pile of crap to go to the dump? And I've got some stuff I'm going to donate. And I've got, that's progress. Yes. And that's the stuff that we need to look at, even though it doesn't look as great as it did, but it's different than what it was before you started changing it. Yeah. You know, sometimes you don't recognize the progress because you're in a pit and it's, it just all looks bad, but you don't realize that it's not the same bad. Yeah. It's, it's a better bad. Like mm -hmm. you're not where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. Yeah. And, that's the thing to remember and you know one thing that I've had to learn over the years I feel like it I've had to have that beat into me <laughs> is you have to celebrate the wins along the way no no matter how small or how big because it's one step closer to where you want to be mm -hmm. and what I, like, what I like to do is you know come in and go over the mission statement mm. you know what what is what are the values what, what is what is our you know, guiding principle here and, and make sure that my, my values, personal values, my leadership values align with that. And once those two are lockstep, I am in the race for the long haul. And um, I tell you, I came up against um, some really, really challenging, um, ch challenging barriers, we'll call them, mm -hmm. you know, but we together as a team, we just stay the course. Mm -hmm. There's value in staying the course. You have to first recognize that you are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And once you recognize that, you stay with it. Do the right thing. No matter, it doesn't matter if the wrong things are happening. Mm -hmm. You just do the right thing. I think that's what I, I just stayed focused on that. I and just kept going. I had down moments. I just got up and kept going. You know, it's interesting. I look, I think back because you and I are talking about one particular situation. I'm sure anybody could think about different situations to where it got worse before it got better, right? It's the more challenging. I think what happens is the, the and I'm going to call it what it, what I see it to be is the more desperate people get that you're, um, as you're cleaning house or, or trying to make that change and, you know, uh, and, 
turn the ship around, David Marquette, that comes to mind. I think the more challenging it gets when people get desperate, the louder they get. Yes. Right? And we may have, I go back to the quote, we may have the perception that it's getting worse, but it's not really getting worse. They're just getting to the end of the fight that they have in them. And then I then I start to think about the people that sat silent, because what happens a lot of times when you have toxic, I'm going to call it toxic culture, okay, is that the loud voices are not the majority. But they're, they're, not just, they're not the majority. They're the loud ones, and, and they appear to be the majority because they're so loud because they've silenced the other people who are actually aligned to your beliefs, what you're grounded in. And what I've noticed is the further we go on to where people can actually see there's hope, right? Light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. Then they start to have faith, okay? And the fear starts to go away. And so their voices start to join with yours. Yes. And I think that's the power in leadership and leaders being tenacious in the way they lead that you that you all of a sudden have the quiet the quiet many, if you will, suddenly have the power to have a voice. And that's when it really starts shifting to something that's amazing. Yes, absolutely. You know, when you, when you said that, it took my mind back to a story um, that I, I, got, I had to navigate. You know, I, I bumped into one of the charge nurses on a particular unit who clearly was against the shenanigans that was happening on the floor, um, but was scared to speak up and say something about it. And it, it was clear to me, it was clear to other leaders that she knew what was happening, mm -hmm. but was scared. And so I, I remember pulling her to the side and asking her like, you know, hey, what's going on? I, you know, I, it, it's clear to me that you, you knew what happened. You were mm -hmm. here. Um, is there any reason that you feel like you can't speak up. And she told me, you know, uh, the last time I spoke up, you know, I, I was hoping that the leadership team would manage this individual. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, uh, they were unsuccessful with that. Mm -hmm. and the, individual, the individual came back and they bullied me. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to go through that again. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that was like a defining moment, uh, the, the epitome and the epitome of what you're talking about here today. You know, mm -hmm. she was scared to speak up because she didn't feel safe. She didn't mm -hmm. feel like she would be, I guess, quote unquote, protected. Mm -hmm. And she felt like people would know that she said something. Mm -hmm. that she spoke up. And so, you know, I, I sat down and we had further discussion. And, you know, we talked about what support looks like to her. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I told her, I'm going to be here lockstep with you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, long story short, we got the information. We were able to hold the individual accountable. Mm -hmm. and, and the bullying that she spoke of, we, it never happened. And so I think that sent a signal on mm -hmm. that unit. Yeah. Letting the team know that, you know, people are going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. we're all gonna we're all gonna do the right thing here mm -hmm. so anyway i just wanted to share that because no that i it's powerful and i'm you're gonna laugh when i tell you where my brain went just now <laughs> um the wizard of oz when um when the house lands on the wicked witch of whatever it was and i don't know if you remember that movie and then glenda the good witch of the north Let's all the munchkins let them know it's safe. It's safe to come out. And then they came out from everywhere. <laughs> they were they were everywhere. Yeah. But that's what came to mind for me is that the power of being a tenacious leader, right? And and going toward the stuff that's the right stuff is that you literally set people free. And and then you start they're engaged, they're, they're empowered, they feel safe. And I mean, it just sets the place on fire. I mean, I look at changes in performance for that organization when you started, 
and then toward the end of your tenure there. And um, I mean, it's nothing short of amazing, the turnaround. And that's because you you literally had everyone working toward the same thing, um, which is, is powerful stuff. Yes. I mean, it was definitely a team effort. I mean, I think we had the, you know, the right team at the right mm -hmm. time and we had the right plan. Right. And, and we executed and uh, together we were able to turn things around, you know, for the community that we serve. And that was a real win. Yeah. And I'm so proud of, of that time in my career mm -hmm. and I'm extremely proud of that team. Yeah. No, I think it's awesome. So I thank you. I just, when I think about the quote and the power of tenacity, your picture is right there. <laughs> so, you, know, you know, I may complain about things, but I tell you, <laughs> after the complaining, I dig my heels in and we get to work. We put our heads down and we get to work. No matter how tough it is, you stay the course. And well, I, you win. Yeah, and that's the that's the power in the tenacity, especially when you have a leader that is tenacious, um, that keeps going. And it's it's not easy to do, as you've commented. Um, but I just, it's it's so needed on so many levels. So I thank you for that. So Tandy, I've enjoyed this time as always. Um, what are one or two things you want people to walk away with on the power of tenacity? <sighs> Take the time that you need in the pit, but get up, get out, and get back to work. Oh, that's tough love there. Yes. Um, the thing I would say is, and, and I mentioned it before, find a way to get, because when you're in it, um, you can get lost in it and, and mired in it at some point. Find an outlet for yourself if, as you're up against the more challenging aspects of leadership. Um, so that you do have different perspectives. So someone that is a champion in your corner can start talking you through stuff, whatever. I mean, a coach, a friend, whatever that looks like. Yes. Um, because that's the important stuff because it is an exhausting thing to be up against some cultures when you're doing culture change and um, shifting stuff. But it is a, it's well worth it. I got one last quote. Um, it is, um, everything is hard before it gets easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my last quote, well, everything gets hard before it gets easy. Um, so anyway, thank you. And so this has been Leadership Soundbites with Tansy and Michelle on the power of tenacity. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and have a great evening. Thank you. Good night.